How's it going everyone? I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So there's this new tool that came out called GitHub Copilot, which is supposed to help you write code. And I kind of wanted to try to build something realistic with it. So what I'm going to build out is a simple express service that you can maybe do a couple of CRUD endpoints on and see how good or bad GitHub Copilot actually is. So I do have the extension already set up. Um, and let's just try to use as much as we can Copilot to kind of build out an express service. How Copilot works is you can write comments in your editor and it will give you suggestions as to what it thinks you want to code. So if I want to do like comments that said like set up a simple express server and then go to the next line, that should hopefully start giving me some suggestions of how I can do that. So let's just try doing that out, do it like um, running that. And kind of look at the code that it's giving us. And it looks like it's actually setting up a ton of stuff. So this is kind of more than like I would want for a simple express service. So I'm going to kind of take a take a step back. Maybe we can kind of refactor what we're doing here. Um, so instead, let's just make a function called like const set up basic express server. Um, hopefully this works or gives us something. Awesome. So that was pretty cool. I mean, it set up an express service. Uh, since I know Node and I know Express, like I can kind of verify that this seems like it's pretty good. Off the bat though, it's including some libraries that we don't have. So I'm gonna go ahead and just initialize a package JSON so we can install some of these. So like first off, if you don't, Copilot helps you if you kind of already know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, then it's not gonna help you at all. All right, so we kind of need to run this function which hopefully Copilot will kind of help us out. Um, start server, maybe I can give it some, there we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I basically just told me how to start the server and this should host the server on some port, I think. In fact, it's not doing an app.listen, so I don't know if I need to do more. Oh, okay, I'll just keep on doing some more suggestions here. All right, so now it's gonna start the server on port 3000. And if I try to run this, I think it's gonna crash. So I'm gonna do like node of index and it should crash because we don't have a couple of packages installed, like express is not defined. So let's just go to the top and maybe we can say like import express npm package. And here we go. Uh, let's see, set up body parser package. Um, so this is making a function for some reason. Actually, we don't need any of that. What I'm actually going to do is just say express.json, and I believe I could just get rid of that. I don't need cookie parser. Uh, this is going to host static files from a public directory. So again, you kind of have to know what you're doing. You can't just expect Copilot to do everything for you. But what I'm going to do is install uh, the express package so that it doesn't crash when we try to run it. Let's try it again. I'll run the server here and it's failing because path is not defined. So again, we need to import path. So I'm gonna say const p and just, actually I say const path is equal to that. Again, a cool thing you can do is just type in const in like a variable name and it'll kind of guess at what you're trying to do. All right, so it's running on port 3000 now and what I have here is a Thunder client extension kind of set up. And we can use this to verify that our endpoint is working. In fact, we don't actually have an endpoint. So that's something we could try to do. Let's go ahead and set up a basic endpoint that maybe returns uh, or that can create to-do list items, okay? So let's just start with doing some CRUD functionality. So with Express, you can register endpoints. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna say like create an Express route, which and create a to-do list item and put it into mongoose, mongodb using mongoose. Um, so let's see if that actually generate what we want. So this is expecting that you can do a post request to slash to-dos, you pass it some body. Um, it's also expecting that you have a file called model slash to-do, so we might have to create that. And then it's creating the to do model and one thing I'm noticing that it's trying to do callbacks here so I'm going to actually add async here and I think that's going to actually change the way it's doing some stuff um, so yeah 
Now we have an actual endpoint that we can create to-do list items with, assuming that we have this to-do model imported, uh, which we don't. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and like set up a set up a mongoose. You know, I'm going to say set up mongoose. Let's just get mongoose going. So that'll import mongoose. That'll connect to an example database that I would have locally. And I guess that's all you need to do. So I could also say set up a mongoose model, which I guess we can call it called to do. I don't know. Is that set up mongoose to do list? I don't, I don't want a function. So I'm going to say const and see what it gives me to do schema. Okay. So if you are familiar with mongoose, you basically create schemas and you can kind of put things on them, but Ooh, this is already giving me as text incompleted. That's pretty cool. All right, so we have a to-do list item that basically has some text, and it also has a completed Boolean. So if you have a UI, you can check a checkbox to complete the item or not. Um, that's pretty awesome. Let's see if it gives us more suggestions. So typically in Mongoose, you have to like register the to-do schema. So let's see if that does that. It does, and it gives us back a model here. Um, so one thing you'll notice is that in order to use this model on our post endpoint, we can't just say to do model here. Like, I think we need to use this one. Uh, so let's just kind of undo some of this and let it regenerate all that code. Again, why is it doing? Let me do that. Let me put a wait. So it just makes sure that's always doing async await. All right. So let's restart a service. I'll say node mon of index. So far I'm liking this plugin. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, I think we forgot to install mongoose. So npmi set up mongoose. Make sure that's installed. And let's just rerun our service and see if we can actually kind of do a post request to save that to-do list item. So I'm gonna go to my plugin called Thunder Client. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new request to that Endpoint, I think we're in port 3000. Uh, what are we at? Yeah, 3000 is the default. And we can say slash to do's, I believe it was called. Yep, so we can do a post request to that, specify some body, and kind of minimize some of this stuff running out of space. And it looks like we need to pass in text incompleted. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is say set completed to false by default and that looks like it's pretty good, but I'm actually just going to say completed is false like this. All right. So now we could probably just send some text and I can say like, hello, copilot. All right, let's do some, see what happens. Bad request. So our server failed. And it failed because there's an unexpected token on line 32. I probably forgot to do something here. What line? JSON pars. So actually my JSON might have some bad content in it. Oh, I have an extra curly brace. That's probably why. Let's try it again. I'm gonna do a send. I got back a 201 created response. So that is a good sign. Um, I wish I had more real estate with this Thunder client plugin, but it is what it is. So hopefully that actually saved that to-do list item into a Mongo's, MongoDB table called to-do MVC MongoDB example. Um, the easiest way to check that is probably make a new endpoint that we can use to fetch the to-do list item. I'm not sure why I can't see the responses here. I don't know if I need to like, probably have to zoom out or something, but that should have returned the actual, oh, I guess it didn't send anything back. Um, let me delete that line and redo it so that we can actually get a response back. Although I'm not really sure how to see the response. It should have sent, let me change this to JSON. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, I, I don't know. Now, there's probably something missing here where it's not actually sending back the JSON, but it should have. I mean, if we were to console log this out, Maybe we do this and I'll print out save to do. 
I'm going to console log this to make sure that everything is working as we think it is. Look at that. It's even suggesting like the exact thing I'm trying to print out. So let's try it again. And this is what it's printing out. So yeah, I just think the response is occluded down here, but no, no biggie. So let's make another endpoint where we can actually get the to-do list item based on this underscore ID. So let's just go ahead and say create an express route which returns a to-do list item given a mongoose or mongodb id let's see what this tries to generate for us so that is an endpoint you can do a get request with the id and that is going to basically call a mongoose find by id let's see cool so let's actually hit this endpoint and see what happens so i'm going to make another request here i'm going to say localhost 3000 slash to do slash and then pass this ID. Let's see if that actually gets back anything. And there you have it. You have the actual response back. We got it back. Yo, so this is actually pretty cool. I mean, like you, you have to have knowledge about what you're doing, but it really helps you write the code for you. Because a lot of this stuff is like boilerplate, especially when you're dealing with CRUDs. But let's just do another endpoint. Let's try like uh, create an express route, which returns all of the to-do list items in the mongodb table so this is a get request to slash to do's basically going to return everything so it seems so i can go here and actually just say get me all the to do's here and if we can actually see the response i might have to zoom out maybe that's the issue so do a request to the to do's oh here we go so this is the response. We got back four to-do list items. That's pretty cool. So I'm not really going to do much else in this video. I just wanted to kind of show you how powerful this can be to build out some simple functionality. You can notice that I didn't even have to load up any documentation, right? Uh, a lot of the reason is because I already used Mongoose in the past. I've used Express in the past. I kind of understand what all this code is doing, but I could foresee people just using code that's recommended to them and they don't actually know what that code's doing. So that could be a big problem if you're a beginner and you're just copying pasting code directly into your app and you have no context of what that code does or what problem it solves. But luckily I have used and kind of know all this code. So it's, I kind of read over it as it's being generated and I know how to kind of regenerate it or give the copilot more context so that it can kind of generate us better examples that we can use. But overall, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with this. I might actually continue using this in my day to day because I think it actually does help me become a lot more productive. I think the last statement I'll make about Copilot is that a lot of people are like making videos about it's going to take your jobs. It's like, not really. It, it's really not because if you saw me, like there's many times where you have to kind of redo the expression or redo the suggestion because you know that it's not good. So you have to be good at reading code and understanding what code does so that you know when to accept or not accept the Copilot suggestion. Cool. Well, I think there's a lot of other ways you can kind of use Copilot. I haven't really dived deep into how you can do this, but if you have any suggestions or comments about how you've used it, let me know. Maybe I can kind of read up more and do another video if you like watching this video. Also, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this video and be sure to click that subscribe button if you're new to this channel because I'm going to be posting other videos like this in the future. All right. Have a good day and thanks for watching.